here is really kind of the process. If I wanted to find, let's just work on finding the range here. If I want to work on finding the range, again, if you think about the graph, the x and the y points are swapped, right? So if I wanted to find the range, the first thing I can do is just swap the variables. And every single time, that's what you guys are going to do. You're just going to swap the variables, OK? Now, the second step, once you've swapped the variables, is just solve for y. So we're going to use inverse operations. And your investigation that I gave you guys last class period was, um, was for you guys to practice using inverse operations and when you should use them. So if you didn't do that, I would highly recommend that you um, go ahead and do that. Because I have all the answers, because a lot of people make mistakes using the inverse of operations. You could write the answer. Now, now that I've solved for y, though, I want to use inverse notation. So I can just use y to the negative 1. You could leave it like this. However, on a multiple choice exam, it might be written like this. Instead of dividing by 2, you can multiply by 1 half. Right? Those are equivalent. So don't be confused if you see a different notation. Now, the other thing is, what if I asked you to find the domain and range? Well, um, the domain of this, guys, is just a line, right? It's a line. So a line is, again, or you could actually even distribute this, right? So it could be 1 half x minus 3 halves. It's a line. Domain is all real numbers. What is the range? All real numbers. So in here, it's kind of obvious, because you guys should already know the domain and range. But once we get to these next ones, you guys will see that they are going to be, um, there's going to be some issues with that, OK? And crap. 